The no. speed limit is the only <laughs> limit that we surpass. If you're like at the limit of like crack that a human can add, you're not adding 10. <laughs> You know, you're going to (laughs) die. It's called the (laughs) limit for a reason, bro. Hello and welcome to The Nerdiest Podcast, where nerds talk about nerdy things. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Mr. Jackson Glass, coming at you pre-recorded from, you know, your headphones, your car, wherever you're listening. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is a take two. We got about 10 minutes into it before we got a power flicker and uh, had to wipe it. So here we are, take two. It was only 10 minutes, thank God. But we're back. I'm here with my ride or die, Mr. Nick Barrett, as always. And I'm going to ask him how he is in just a minute. But first, I'm going to say, if you're not following the Nerdiest Podcast on Instagram or on YouTube at the Nerdiest Podcast or on Twitter at Nerdiest Pod, then what are you doing? What are you doing? You got to go over there and follow us over there. You can also go to the nerdiestpodcast.com for merch. Big announcement on that on this episode here in just a minute. But, Mr. Nick Barrett, how was your week? Well, it would have been a whole lot better if the power didn't flicker for no reason. <laughs> um, but other than that, hold on. I'm trying to see if the video saved. Um, I think it did. Oh. So you can, hold on. I want to like watch my power go out. <laughs> if it looks funny enough, I will uh, put it on the screen. If not... Cause I don't I don't know if it like if it like glitched or all went down, or if it was like just long enough that OBS would have gone last. Cause nope, I cause I was cut. okay. <laughs> I was going on about a movie and then you were I was like oh he's being awfully a, quiet. Boom, <laughs> gone. And I was like oh he's frozen. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it was really a, weird because like <laughs> everything shut off, and then everything tried to like stutter back on and shut off again right. and that's why i tried to call you instead of just getting back in discord because right. our internet went out too so that's awesome this is why yeah, everything i own awesome. is on a surge protector yeah because <laughs> you, you never know when that's gonna happen right um, you know so anyway anywho outside of that this week has been pretty okay <laughs> um it was it's just been an average week very Bal- trying to find a balance between work and not working. Like this week, I was able to sit down and like work on a script for a video for about an hour, and I finished it. Uh, because I'm pretty efficient about like once I get rolling mm-hmm. in the script and once I get going, I can finish it in about an hour. Because that's about how long all my videos are. They're all about the same length. Um, sometimes I'll like need a second session of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but like having working on that for an hour when I get home. And then being able to still have, like, a decent chunk of the night to play video games, watch anime, right? do whatever. Like, um, so there was that. Um, and then this morning I did something interesting of I got up and I ran outside. Oh. Outside. Ugh. Which was fun. Uh, <laughs> it was fun until I remembered that it was 65 this morning. And my ears got cold. You know that pain of like when you're yeah. outside and your ears get cold and the pain right. seeps into your head and like now your yeah. head hurts. Yeah. So aside from that, it was great. Okay, like, but 65 is not cold though. Like that is a wonderful running temperature. When you're running on your ears, it's cold. Okay. Like my, <laughs> my physical body was not cold. I thought right. it was really nice. But it was the extremities of the ears. The so like, ears. That makes sense. As it gets colder outside, I might need to take a beanie with me so my ears <laughs> don't get cold. Um, that makes sense. But other than that, I mean, I'll be completely transparent. I started running because there was an anime character who started running. And like, it was just part of his workout routine. And I was like, you know, sure. Why not? Why not? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not going to kill me to get up a half hour early and... Go on like Just a run. run or jog around the block before work. Like, right. 
It, what, what's the worst so... it's going to do? To get me in shape? Ah. That's crazy. Here's what's crazy is I've heard a lot of different things about, like, you know, for dudes, it's better to just do weight because, like, something about how like you know you will burn more calories doing weight just because there's more muscle mass That's or something like that true. but i also just am generally out of shape and so running is a really good like you're just you build a general stamina like right. that is just what what's gonna happen so i need to do that it's just it's hot as balls like 24 7 get up and in the I morning just bro no, it's not even though, hot at 6.30 in the morning. 6.30? It's, it's really not. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's it's even on the hot days, like it's still like in the 70s. Right. No, you're When valid. you get up you're in valid. the morning. Mm -hmm. What's going to be hard, and I might have to stop running in the, the winter because it does right. get down to like 20 at night. Well, here. that's the other thing is like... <sighs> I don't know. Like, this has to do with, like, breathing, too. Like, when it's cold outside, I oh can't breathe. Oh, my gosh. Like, I hate it is that. so... I hate when, like, my lungs get full <laughs> of cold air, just and like... it's just pain <sighs> on the inside. I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> you just can't catch your breath. But then it. it's like, let me go in by the fire. <laughs> so... I might do, like, <laughs> walks. I don't know. I want to, yeah. like... I don't and know. And, I mean, by the time we get there, like, to it being cold, because we're still... Right. What? It's July, so we still right. have at least three more months before it gets cold right um, by then i'll have figured something out even if it's just right. like i'm gonna go down to the gym and run on the treadmill and do the instead. treadmill instead um, yeah so i'm also trying to get in shape because we're going my mom and i are doing a mother-son trip to disney in november <laughs> and the thing we went to this weekend or last yes. weekend that we'll talk about here in a minute Made me realize how woefully out of shape I am because all I do is sit at a desk and work all day. Right. I'm like, huh. I need yeah. to I need to get like my walking and running stamina back up because this Dude, ain't gonna fly. This summer was supposed to be my gym bro arc and it was not. I will not in I my mean, cards. listen, all I need it is permission and I will start blowing up your phone and make you go to the gym. <laughs> yeah. Um I'll get you there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, I didn't really do anything super exciting this week. I helped a couple people move and then was at work and worked on videos and music. And so, you know, good stuff. If you haven't listened to Sophomore Year Part 1, that EP just released this summer. And Jackson Glass, GLAS on Spotify. So go there. Now, the main thing we want to talk about right here is we went somewhere pretty cool last weekend together. Oh, were you not going to talk about like the movie and anything? Oh, I mean, I've been watching a couple random things. I've been watching, uh, we started watching My Hero Academia for our next episode, which is a big deal. Because that's like the number one recommended show for this podcast yeah. was My Hero. Um, and then I've been watching a lot of Dropout. If you don't know Dropout, it's the streaming service that College Humor started. And College Humor was on YouTube and now it's Dropout and it's like $5 a month. And I've been watching the mess out of some dropout. It's so funny. It's like, it's like the modern day whose line is it anyway, which is just my jam. Phenomenal stuff. Um, I also recently watched a movie that I'd never seen before. And it's a movie that I didn't expect to like as much as I did, but I'm genuinely considering putting it in my top 10, like of all time. Whoa. And it's a movie called Sing Street. And made in 2016, it is about Irish high schoolers in Ireland in the 80s that are tired of their, like, super intense Catholic school and tired of their parents being, you know, alcoholics and drug addicts and this and stuff. They're just, they're just in sucky situations. And so they say, screw this, and they start a punk band. And then they like, they're like a pop band and then a rock band. It's like super, super good. And I cried at the end. Phenomenal movie. Highly recommend. 10 out of 10. Sing Street. It's on Netflix. I think you should go watch it if you haven't seen it. So yeah, that's pretty much all I've been watching. I haven't, I need to get back into the bear because I started the first season and then didn't finish it. But I've honestly just really been watching a lot of Dropout, which is just, that's my obsession right now. Hank Green has a stand-up special on there right now that I really want to watch. So anyway, I also watched a movie 
for the after show, watched Pompa the Cinephile, which is our next movie on the Nerdiest After Show for this month, which you can subscribe to for a mere $2.99 a month, and it's a wonderful way to support the show, and then you get a bonus episode every month. So thank you so much to our supporters there. Go on Don't Spotify worry. and subscribe I won't on forget there. to add it to the... Um... To the subscription only the subscription tab this time. this time. Also, fair warning for everybody listening. Um, you can leave comments now, question mark. Um, oh. I was just messing around on the back end of Spotify for podcasters, and I got a notification mm-hmm. that's like, hey, we're doing away with the Q&A sticker thing because now oh. everyone can just leave comments. Like YouTube. Like YouTube? And I was like, okay. I hate that. <laughs> I, can we make it I like really... uh can we make it like the rating where you have to listen to a certain amount of episodes before you can comment? Yeah. Because I don't want these <sighs> random bypassers just uh, d- jumping in, being like, Hey, you yeah. suck. And Your it's voice like, okay. sounds like the the um, actually the nerd, nerd emoji. emoji. I'm dude. <laughs> that made me so mad. <laughs> like I know that yeah. was a, okay. Quick context for those who don't know, I posted a short on Nick with No K a couple weeks ago, and it was the first short that my face was in. Like it wasn't the mm-hmm. first video. Like I've been on on video and right. streams and stuff, right. but it was the first short that my face was in, and everyone was like, "Why does his voice sound like?" The nerd emoji or the um actually, <laughs> like the um actually, and I was like, bro, you should be the uh, the uh, the nerd emoji, and I was like, I'm sorry, what did you want it's, me to sound uh, like? Did you like, want me to talk <laughs> in a deep early voice like this? Is that what you expect? Because then there's a joke there that my lawyer has advised me not to finish. <laughs> so I don't know what you, you know, want from what me. What do you want from me? <laughs> But just move on. Half of them were bots, which also like who programmed the bots to do that? (laughs) YouTube Shorts comments are unhinged. And if you haven't, if you haven't kept up, we've both been doing a lot of stuff on YouTube recently. So you can follow Nick with No K or the Glass Studios on YouTube. But I posted a description. I posted a a short that was like talking about the new Garfield movie and how awful it was. People not like, and I was just like. There are some apparently some diehard Garfield people that are like, you're not a true. The first comment was, you are not a true Garfield fan. And I was uh, like, who gets to gatekeep okay, Garfield, bro? Who's what gatekeeping the heck? Garfield out here? It's freaking Garfield. He's been around since the 80s. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I would love to see is all three of our channels hit 1K by the end of the year. That would be phenomenal. Like, That's why I'm you should subscribe with the links there. in the description. Oh, I'm not basically halfway there. I am halfway there. I'm currently at 752. Hold on. Let me update everyone oh, with like, the numbers. That's like way more than halfway. <laughs> right now, the podcast channel is at 935. So that's the closest yeah. to hitting mm-hmm. 1,000. Mm-hmm. Jackson's at 569. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. 569. And I am at 752. Wow, it so, went up since I checked it like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> um, yeah, everyone's getting real excited for the live stream tonight. Um, <laughs> it's been two months since I've done a tier list. That's freaking wild. Anyway, um, so yeah, everyone listening yeah. should go subscribe to all, three to all channels. of our channels, over which are all linked below. Get us over 1K before the end of the year. And, and then uh, we'll you'll, play you'll Five Nights at Freddy's on stream. All right, he said it, not me. The, the, you heard him. All right, guys. <laughs> if we can get all three channels 1K by the end of the year, we'll play FNAF on stream. Five Nights at Freddy's. Speaking all of right, playing guys. things on stream, you know what we played on stream once? Monopoly. You know what we played yes. recently? Monopoly. You Monopoly. know where we played it? In a hotel. Where? At a convention, which we went to this past weekend. Last weekend. Nailed Booyah. that segue. Yeah. Yeah, we went to I went to my first convention last weekend and let me tell you, it was an experience. It was an experience and I think it was a good one. I had a great experience. I did too. How do you want how do you want to do this? Do you want to just like I mean, play by play? You know, essentially I I really don't have a ton to say. That's the thing cuz it was just a like a really great weekend. I think I'm going to have I'm going to have a video out on the channel about the whole weekend soon. So stay tuned for that. But essentially, essentially it was just like 
huge convention center and upstairs there was a ton of like meeting rooms and some vendors up there to do a lot of cool stuff with like celebrity panels and this and that but then downstairs there's essentially a giant costco but it is only nerd stuff and i mean books games movies swords like apparel are how many, how many like sword stands did we see we f- did we, we counted seven sword shots seven. there was seven individual which not the same which doesn't individual sound like a lot ones. which doesn't sound like a lot until you realize how big a sword store is yeah or like if you're just driving on the highway you're not gonna see like a sword shop like that's a weird thing to have seven of them well i don't there. know it depends on where you go so Anyway, it was super fun. I had a great time. I loved talking to vendors and hanging out. I bought back there. Uh, I bought the Zelda and Chill Volume Two vinyl. Right there, there and it's go. super cool. Sounds great. Um, Nick bought Wii Sports. And oh my gosh, I did! I totally forgot about that. <laughs> he bought Wii Sports. We played some of that. Um, was heading back. Yeah, um, I do think that. The highlight of the entire weekend, though, was that was we ate nothing but hot pockets. Uh, we whoa, 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 like <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. okay. Okay, let's the, let's back up. We reel were it at, in a little bit. We were at Publix. We're poor on our on our way, <laughs> like getting ready to leave, and we were trying to figure out what we needed to bring food wise because we were right. only there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So while we were there. We're like, okay, we have bread so we can make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches Mm -hmm. because we're poor. Um, Because most of the money went to the hotel. Right. Um, (laughs) So, you know. (laughs) We're like trying to figure out what we're going to (laughs) eat. And we walk in the freezer aisle and I'm like, well, the room has a microwave, right? And we're like, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, totally. Every hotel has a microwave. (laughs) As we're in, as we're in there, we're getting like, what are we going to eat? Because we just need one dinner because we didn't want to eat out both nights. We ate out the second night, which I'm not going to lie. That restaurant was a little overpriced. It was overpriced for for what it was. That was so true. Like it was like good, but it was the mac and cheese was better anyway. anyway, (laughs) So for the first night, we're like, okay, we need a meal of some kind. Right. So I was like, you know, we should get hot pockets because I never have hot pockets. I never have hot pockets. I I ever. They're like, I haven't had a hot pocket in like 10 years. Right. So we get Hot Pocket. We get to the hotel. Not only did the Hot Pocket boxes fall apart in the cooler because the ice melted and (laughs) the boxes got wet. Right. The Hot Pockets were completely thawed by the time we got to the hotel. Right. (laughs) So we just threw them in the fridge. We're like, okay, just keep them in the cool fridge. It'll be fine. So we go out. We like, we went to the convention a little bit on Friday, just kind of like scope it out, see what's there. Like, oh, let's check out some of the vendors. Don't buy anything yet, but, like, mm-hmm. check out some of this stuff. Um, we went and saw Despicable Me. F- oh, no. No, you no! accidentally <laughs> thumbsed up. <laughs> you accidentally thumbsed up and Discord was... <laughs> no. Oh, I hate this so much. Hey, guys. We're back. So sorry. Third time's the charm on... Third freaking- time's the charm. Technical difficulties Where were today, we? I guess. So we anyway, came back. There was Hot Pockets. So we came <laughs> back. There was Hot Pockets. They were thawed. <laughs> they were thawed. <laughs> we went out and saw Despicable Me 4. That was the last thing I said. Right. Because I said right. I went like that, and it like did the thing. I turned them off, and I'm done, because <laughs> I don't want it to crash my stream later. Um, oh, my gosh. So we came back. We're like, oh, we're hungry. There was no microwave in the room. No. It was... Downstairs, mm-hmm. in the breakfast mm-hmm. area. So yep. we walked downstairs with these hot pockets. <laughs> we each took one, put them in there, put them in the microwave, warmed up, came back, ate them. We're like, "Huh, I'm still hungry." Right. So we warm up the other hot pockets, bring them back, call it right. a day. You know, I I will spare you the details. <laughs> I'm just saying that we have sworn off hot pockets forever. Yeah. Because they went down great. The rest of the process, not so great. So, Um, we will never be eating Hot Pockets again. I love how we were both like, you were like, why did you let me buy Hot Pockets? And I was like, 
I don't know. I don't eat hot pockets either. Like neither of us eat hot pockets. We, don't we just eat hot thought, pocket, it would, which sucks because it's such a good idea. Like the idea right. in, in practice <laughs> is not great. No. In theory, but it was a good like idea. This little microwavable mini pizza. Right. Super easy. Dude, super so easy. So great. Let's just say um, there was some riding of the porcelain pony that weekend, and it was. Yeah. Uh, not not ideal, but convention was great. <laughs> convention was great. We got to go to a Giancarlo Esposito panel. Yes, yes. Which was that then was in stark contrast to the Gina Carano panel. Right. <laughs> which was all, what's so funny is, and I'm not here to get political. I just, no. I, I put the connection together like two days ago. We go to the Giancarlo Esposito panel and somehow we got on the topic of like, what's your advice for young people? And he was very much like, oh, well, we need to fight the system, like fight the power, like right. take down the system. Said something We're about stuck like in this two warming, party system and it yeah. sucks and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't know. He's got a couple good points in there. And then we go to the Gina Carano panel and all the like white conservative dads showed up. Right. <laughs> so that's where that conversation went. And... <laughs> She was just like, yeah, I think we need to like start seeing people as people and like just not you demonize know. either side and like realize that there's people over there who have their own issues, right? Right. We weren't out of the convention, what, 30 minutes? And it's like, oh, former President Donald Trump's been shot. Yeah. And, oh. What? <laughs> okay, cool. What? <laughs> okay. So it's like, it was really yeah. funny that we came off these two panels. Right. That one and we were having. Like, Row, row, fight the power. And the other one right. was like, hey, let's not demonize. And then this third thing See, happened. Because we were having really great conversations, too. We were, like, talking about, like, politics and, like, the state of the world and, like, what we can do. And, like, how to, we're, like, having, like, good right. conversations with the contrast of the two panels and the views <laughs> that we saw and what we thought. And then it was, like, yeah, um, there was an assassination attempt. And we were, like. Awesome. Let's go home. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> I'd Which, like to go okay. home, please. Mm -hmm. It's it's a terrible thing that happened, and it's also very sad that someone died. Like that's right. That's terrible. I got I got very heated on Twitter because people were making a lot of jokes, and I'm like, guys, someone died, so maybe let's. This not isn't funny. Make right. jokes. It's not funny. Um, but it is just very interesting. And like something I said as we were walking out of the convention right. was like. Yeah, I feel like as a society, we've lost the ability to have a conversation. And when you lose that ability, that's when people start fighting and there's violence. And then that happened. Then so, that like, happened. it was just very interesting how that all, like, tied right. together. That all came, came together. <laughs> and I'm like, uh huh. Okay. That's right. interesting. It was very so, interesting. Outside yeah. of that, someone the did ask Giancarlo awesome. about the community movie, which I did not think was going to happen. We were like, is he going to be in the community movie? And he essentially and he like, said that he was no. too good for the community He's like, movie. I take on more deeper emotional roles now. Uh, and we were like, okay, don't think you're too like, good for the community okay, movie. Okay, buddy. <laughs> like, calm down. Go, turn the volume down a little bit, buddy, now. <laughs> so, so, you know. Yeah, what convention was, was great. Overall thoughts on the convention. My you've overall never been. thoughts on the convention is, I would not go by myself Me because either. I think that it was more about the friends you make along the way. Because, like, the convention was great, but I just had a good time with you. Like, we right. just had fun together, and like, the best parts of the weekend weren't even at the convention. Like, it was just us, like, sneaking Hot Pockets around and, like, being doing, like, dumb stuff downtown. And, like, so, really, I think, and I talk about this in the video, in my YouTube video that'll come out at some point. Um, it's the kind of thing where it's, like, you're not personally like there's none of the stuff that was there was like strong enough interest to me to like be like i have to go see this i need to see this or i didn't need to pay for any of the the like photo ops or autographs or anything right but it was like Giancarlo esposito that's awesome yeah let's go see him or like we went to michael rooker's q a and it was like oh this is really fun like he's awesome or like even the gina carano one i was like she said some really interesting stuff i thought was cool and i was like yeah that's awesome but like at the end of the day, I really think that is just a gathering point for people of similar interests. Yeah. 100%. And it really is just like this place for people to go hang out for a weekend and like look at cool vendors and buy games and talk to each other and hang out and like, you know, hang out downtown. And so I had a great time. 
But I think that if you went with the wrong group, it would be horrible. Oh, a hundred percent. Conventions are. It's a social conventions game. Conventions ride and die on who you go with. Right. It is a social event. That is how I feel. <laughs> I've been to really good conventions, and I've been yeah. to really bad conventions. And it even and it like it usually is not the convention itself that's bad. Right. It is the people you go with. Right. Like I went to one last year. And in a very similar vein, the best parts of the convention were when we weren't at the convention. Right. Like I went to one with Zoe who does like our fearless graphic designer. Mm-hmm. Um I went with her and a couple of her friends and her brother and like we went and that was really fun and I went again mm-hmm. this year cuz right. that was really fun and I like so And then there was the one I went to in Atlanta last year that I was like, (laughs) that one actually was not the convention or the people. It was just Atlanta. (laughs) Yeah. Like, (laughs) Atlanta just sucks. Yeah. And I never want to go back. In stark contrast to the one we went to in Knoxville. Right. Dude, I'd go back to Knoxville. I'd go back. I felt so so safe. I haven't been in years. I would walk around outside at night. Right. We did. And not feel like I'm going to get shot. I've only um, been one other time, and I had a great time this time. Like, I'm intending to go back. But, yeah, I thought it was really fun, and it was really it was a really unique experience that I am glad I had. But I also think, I still think it was too expensive for what it was. Yeah. It was overpriced. <laughs> yeah. Was it, you mean, like, the convention was too expensive or overall? I think the convention was too expensive. Okay, I was going to say, you better not say overall. I No, I not overall. <laughs> <laughs> not I, overall. I think the convention, because the convention ticket was like... $90? $90, which was cool, because that's, days, a kind of, that's like what you'd pay to go see like a concert or, you know, like something like that. And it's, but it's the kind of thing where it's like, I pay $90 to go into the store. You know, right. it's kind of like Disney where you're like, okay, my ticket was X, but now I'm looking at food, like m- merchandising is overpriced, like all this stuff. And it was just kind of like, you know, if none of that stuff was if, essentially, that's why I wouldn't go by myself. Like if it was like 30 bucks, I would totally walk around that whole place, but it wouldn't be worth the money if I wasn't going for social aspect. Right. That's, that's my consensus. I think conventions i you gotta kind of weigh the price like i went to one Mm -hmm. here that was very local and very small and it was like 20 bucks and Mm -hmm. i was like okay i didn't buy anything but it was more of the social aspect of like oh i went with my coworkers and like that was fun um there's another one we want to go to that is also local but it's a little bigger because it's in the convention center here Mm -hmm. uh the other one was not um but it's like I think 60 for the day, but it's like along the same line as like size of the one we just went to. Right. So like that makes sense. And it's also the social aspect of like, Oh, right. I'm going to go with my coworkers again. Or like maybe I'll go with church friends. Right. So there's that aspect of it too. Personally, my favorite part of the weekend was the incredibly scuffed game of Monopoly we played. Because <laughs> we were that like, was all rough. right, we just that had dinner. Rough. Let's end out the night. Like, we're going to finish our dessert. Like, just kind of chill. Let's mm-hmm. play Monopoly. What, what setting should we put the AI on? Ah, easy. Normal. Easy is fine. It's fine. We did easy. Dude, we got freaking destroyed. Yeah, this AI bankrupted me like an hour in like I fought for my life against this stupid AI for like an hour. And then I literally had to bankrupt. I literally sold all my properties to Nick because I was like, we're officially a team now. This guy has to go down like he's going down. And it was (laughs) here's the thing. We won after a two hour game. We won. We had to cheat like seven times, (laughs) but we won. (laughs) How do you cheat? Well, well, let me tell you. <laughs> the free parking was up to like $1,200. Right. And we thought, hmm, it'd be great if one of us got it. Mm-hmm. But if not, 
like we were both at such a poor state. I was like, right. if, if this AI gets free parking, like we're done. I'm going right. to quit. So I was holding my Joy-Con and I was like ready to home X A like to close, close the game. And as soon as he hit, I was like, I know like you need nine spaces. Like, hit nine. I closed it. And we were like done. We were going to watch well, I'm something. Done. Like I'm not and doing this. Jackson <laughs> went to the bathroom and I was like, oh, let me just for funsies see if it's saved. And it did. But the game, re it saved before the AI got free parking and before it had rolled. Mm -hmm. So then it rolled again and got an eight. And, and we're like, get free wait. Ah, we can change the fate. <laughs> we can save scum. Mm -hmm. Like the speedrunners do. Right. So mm -hmm. every time we got an unfavorable outcome, we just we started just quit. <laughs> quit. And then did it again. And I mean, we won. <laughs> We won. We it reached a like point seven where we're like, quits, you but... know what? We're too far in. We have to be committed to something. Right. <laughs> so we're going to save Scum. And it worked We need to play again. Fine. We need to play again because I need justice from that. I know. On. We need like an actually good game. Right. Um, <clears throat> crazy. So that was great. That's we also up. hit McKay's on the way home Sunday. Yeah. Which was I I'm bought, always down for McKay's. I love McKay's. I bought Nobody on Blu ray and I also bought a book called the mammoth book of tasteless jokes and it's literally an alphabetized book of offensive jokes and i was just like this is peak like this is my favorite book right now <clears throat> and there's that's an awesome. entire chapter for the beatles and that's my favorite part so i took yeah. a bunch of manga there traded it in and i bought more manga and a couple blu-rays so. you know we uh so yeah we had a great weekend so it was super fun and you know i would do it again but I, I would do it with you. Godspeed. Out of context. No one clipped that. <laughs> it, no, it's too late. <laughs> um, so that it's, was really our only news. We also... Oh, it wasn't even news. We got one more thing up our sleeves. That's right. Everybody, if you go to the nerdiespodcast.com right now, we're very happy to announce Finally. that we have... Two new merch designs out right now. Now, I bet you're wondering what new merch designs. Now, there's two. Now, you can get these in shirts. There's a hat of some hats available, sweatshirts, whatever whatever your heart desires. We have the Nerdiest Podcast audience score, which is a Rotten Tomatoes riff on how the audience score is always higher than the critic score. And so we have a riff on that on a shirt, and they're, I'm pretty sure there's a hat version on there that we're working on. So you can go buy that or... You can buy our new design from the Walt Disney Public Domain Collection, Steamboat Willie. You can have your very own Steamboat Willie shirt. And that's right. The text says Walt Disney's Public Domain, Steamboat Willie. That's right. The nerdiespodcast.com new merch just launched. And guess what? We get all that money. All the money goes to us. We make these designs and we keep up the store and all this. And it's just a really great way to support the show because we are independently produced and we have to do everything together. So there's a really great way to show your support and just help out the show. So go to the nerdiespodcast.com for buy new Jackson a stream merch. Day. Help us buy me or a, a new stream computer. day. <laughs> that would be great. I need that new computer so bad, bro. <laughs> Did you ever buy all that right. camera? There was on sale. No, I decided not to. Wait, you can't justify spending fifteen hundred dollars on Prime no, Day. I, I just had a, I had a lapse of judgment and was about to put it in my cart, and then was like, no, this is a decision you have to sleep on. <laughs> this and is not the one Prime of those. Day deal was over. <laughs> and then I was like, this is probably for the best. <laughs> Did you buy anything for Prime Day? This is really off topic. No, no. Oh. Here's the thing. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you get? Um, well, I got these headphones. Right. I also got a case for these headphones <laughs> and more memory foam tips for these headphones, none of which were on Prime Day sale. I was just waiting for them to go on sale right. for Prime Day, and, and then they like, didn't, and I happening. was like, okay, fine. Um, I also got a steering wheel cover for my car nice, and an electric toothbrush. Wow. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> See, so, I looked at all the deals, but all of them were like 10%. They all kind of sucked. They were like 20%. And I was like, Prime Day used to be like Black Friday level deals. Yeah, it used to be Black Friday in the middle of the year, and now it's just another day on Amazon. Right. I'm like, I could find a better deal on like a Tuesday, you know? Like, this they, is. They the put a bunch of manga on sale. 
and acted like it was on sale. And I'm like, bro, it's like $5 off. That's not a yeah. sale. It's normally $5 off. I feel this way about Black Friday too, but I think the only thing worth buying on those sale days is tech because that's the stuff that actually gets pretty discounted. So like cameras were $500 off. Some MacBooks were like $500 off and that's worth it if you're intending to buy that sort of thing. Like I'm saving my money now and hoping to get a new computer for Black Friday. We will see how that works out just because I use my computer every day for my job, my in my personal projects and for school. So it's like kind of a necessity for me. Yeah. So, you know, um, if this one like randomly dies, I'm so screwed. So I'm kind of like praying it makes it to November, but yeah, that's, that's that about that. Nerdiespodcast.com. Get me a new computer now. Thank you so much for sticking with us thus far through our technical difficulties, through our ramblings. We know that you've, you've wanted to get to this point and we're here. Here are some unhinged bad film takes. Now, if you don't think they're bad, apparently you can leave a comment. So leave a comment down below on which ones you love, which ones you disagree with, which ones you agree with, and which one you say, finally, someone said it. Because honestly, sometimes we're kind of based. So I've organized mine from spicy level. It goes level one, two, three. Three being the spiciest. Now, mine are just on a notes document. Mr. Nick. Hit me with a hot take. Hit me right. with like something that can just really start us off and just be like, "Frick, dude!" You want me to go like crazy hard, like hit a home run on the first um, one, or start it off a little, a little, a little I think a you little start tame. off a little slow because mine Kay. are a little tame at the beginning. Okay, uh, I'm ready. Hit me. Movie theaters should have a courtesy seat. I said this. Oh. I said this on an episode like a year ago, and it got clipped out in a short. Of like, hey, what happened? Like, that was the one good thing they did during COVID was like leaving a courtesy seat in between everyone because I don't want to sit next to a random stranger who nine times out of ten has not bathed in the last week. Right. Um, now, that might be on me because I go see a lot of anime movies, but that's besides the point. Generally speaking, courtesy seats should come back. And and in the comments of that short, people are like, uh... Just, uh, just, buy, just, just, and I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, like, idiot. Um, right. I don't, I can't afford, dude, movie tickets are like $20 now. I can't afford right. you to can't buy, just buy, two. A, buy the seat next to me. No. On either side. That's an extra $40. I just, I just got tickets for Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, I need to see On that. opening night, and I'm so hyped. But they were like, all the middle, the like all the seats that were bought were like this big blob in the middle, and I was like about I'm about to break a cardinal rule, and I just plopped me and me and Logan are going, and I just plopped us right next to like PCs that are already sold, and I was like I don't even care, I don't care anymore. See, I'm sitting next to someone. <laughs> here's my caveat though, mm -hmm. is there's a theater in town that has like the big recliner seats. Right. If that's the case, I don't mind sitting next to people. Right. Like that's what I this think is. That's this is the big theater. But if it's like we're we're the no typical seats that are like right. right up next to each other, and we like got to share an armrest. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. That is an L. That's a fat L. Yeah. No, the big recliner seats are fine because you still get your own armrests. But like if it's like an airplane and it's just like nah, nah, I can't do that anymore. Okay, that's a good. That's a good take. I think that's a good take. Should we do like a system of like. Good take, based bad take. Based or fake? Based or fake? <laughs> I think that's based. Okay. I also think it's based. Okay. That's why it's on cool. my list. <laughs> all right. You ready? This is this is kind of tame. All right. All right. Movie sequels aren't actually that bad, and sometimes they're better than the original. Oh, it's based. I don't even need to hear what you have to say. <laughs> because... I feel like there is a huge stigma around sequels. Like we're like, oh, it's so lazy. Do something original, this and that. And then Inside Out Two is the highest grossing movie of the year under Dune Two. No, I thought and it surpassed Dune Two. Okay, sorry. I mean, so it goes Inside Out Two, Dune Two, Despicable Me Four. So we're like, oh, sequels suck, and then we go pay to see them. So, and then you don't go pay to see the original stuff. That's right, my favorite crowd is right. like, um, we should be supporting original stuff, and then they don't go. Right. I'm like, ah, you're part of the problem, okay. buddy. You know what? 
because think about like there are bad sequels and i think that disney coined this bad sequel stigma when they started doing like lion king one and a half and like mulan two which is like they're all like really unhinged and some of them are good but it was always like straight to dvd straight to vhs like not super well thought out they just needed content to put out right but think about like cars 2 is a banger and no one can fight me on this. Toy Cars Story 2 is 3, a banger. Toy Story, Toy, Story 3, 2. Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, the trilogy is great. I've always thought National Treasure 2 was so underrated. Like, that movie goes crazy. Think about the most po- s- movies like Star Wars. Like, Star Wars like, is oh, the sequels. just sequels. Right. So, like, the sequel trilogy, that d- yeah. that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking, like... We hate on sequels and then be like, Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars movie. And I'm like, okay. That's a sequel. That's a, technically a sequel. So I feel like we need to rethink our sequel stigma. Thank you for coming to my okay. TED Talk. That's based. That's based. based? I'll, I'll give it All right. To you. I think it's based. All right. Let me crank up the heat here a little bit. Um, okay. These are all pretty unhinged. <laughs> oh, what do I want to do? Man, these are all really like hardcore. <laughs> How many more until yeah. you get to like a hardcore one? I think I have three of each level. My third level one is a little hot. Okay. All right. I'll do a little low swing here. Um, okay. oh, I'm just going to pick one. Uh, hot take. Ariel is the worst Disney princess. And allow wow. me to elaborate. I know okay. that's that's a little hard <laughs> swing. Um, she's the worst Disney that princess. That is so when you racist. Think of Disney, no, it's not. She's white. <laughs> I'm not talking about the new one. I'm just talking in general. Will bro. not be tolerated. Um. Anyway, <laughs> I don't think that can be the cold open, but it sure <laughs> would be funny. <laughs> uh, so when you think of a Disney princess, right? <laughs> What what made a lot of Disney princesses likable and enjoyable was like they're really kind. I love they're that you caring, care about this. They're selfless, even. Like, think about Belle, right? She's very selfless and kind, and like in the live action movie, she's trying to teach kids how to read, like. Just a very, and like, that was the whole point of Beauty and the Beast was like, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. need to see Pat, like, don't judge a book by its cover. I didn't, I never, right. re- okay, cool. I was today years old that when I realized really that was the parallel they were trying to make this movie. And Belle likes books. Anyway, so like Belle, Regardless. super <laughs> selfless, right? Mulan, mm-hmm. another very selfless character who disguised herself as a guy so that she could go fight in place of her dad who was too sick to do it and then ended up like saving all of China. That's awesome. Right? If you want a more recent ex- recent thing, Moana goes on this grand journey to save her people. Like that's great. Mm-hmm. Then you have Ariel who her sole motivation in the movie is not to better society as as one of the king's daughter it's not to improve people's lives by singing or teaching them about the human world it's cuz she wants to really i can't say that but the ch- <laughs> she really wants to bang this dude and that is the sole motivation of her in that movie and it sucks i'm sorry she's the worst because she's the most self-centered narcissistic egotistical loser on the yes. planet she is the yes. ab- she is the antithesis of what a disney yes. princess should be because her whole motivation yes. is like i really this guy's super hot i want to be with him and her dad's like hey humans killed your mom so like maybe we should be cautious <laughs> i'm not saying he's entirely in the right i'm just saying that her like going past that and going to her weird essential oil crunchy aunt <laughs> <laughs> to be like, hey, you got essential oils that it turned me into a human so I can go like marry this guy. <laughs> and her aunt's like, yeah, if you sell your soul, look, she doesn't even know enough to not sell her soul away. 
just for a chance to be with this guy. And everyone's like, oh, that's true love. No, it's not. That's called being an idiot, and she's not even blonde. <sighs> anyway. This Ariel is what the show is all sucks. about. <laughs> this is what the show is all about. <laughs> I love this show. <laughs> I love it here. So yeah, that's basic freak. Ariel is the worst. <laughs> that's basic. And anyone freak. who like glazes her, you are blinded by nostalgia. The movie oh. is all right. Like I think the movie <laughs> has good music. Everyone else in the movie is great, except for Ariel and Prince Eric, which is hard because they're like the leading characters because mm -hmm. she's just trash and he's a one-dimensional cardboard box. And being one-dimensional is actually probably a little too generous. So when that's your two leads, that's really hard. But everyone else wow. in the movie is fine. I think Ursula is a great villain because she really wow. just like takes full advantage of everything she was trying to do. So yeah, Ariel is the worst Disney princess. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Wow. That's what this is all about. That is what this is I all about. I told you, all of mine are heavy hitters. I think that's base and, as like, heck. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> this one is probably a little tamer than oh, that. It's not going to get as heated. This is kind of, we talked about this a little bit this last weekend, but here we go. We need to hold animated movies to the same standard as live action movies. Oh, dude, movies. that's not even a hot take. That's just a good opinion. Listen, when we go and see, like, Despicable Me 4, and someone's like, I mean, it's pretty good, but it's like, you know, it's good for a kid's movie. And I'm like, no. No. We have proven plenty of times that we can put just as much effort into kids movies to make them good movies we cannot give studios a pass for making bad movies because they're kids movies we have proven so many freaking times that they can be very good granted those movies don't always make more money so studios are not going to push those movies but you look at like Puss and Boots The Last Wish. The movie's phenomenal for all ages. Literally any DreamWorks movie. Like, that mo mo most of those movies are like phenomenal for kids and adults. So I really don't like this argument that we're saying this is good for a kid's movie. We need to just... Listen, we cannot just feed our children mindless entertainment and think that that's not going to affect them later. This is, like, an actual issue. Like, kids' media is slowly getting dumber. And we're going to be raising dumb children. Cocomel and iPad babies. Cocomel and iPad babies are an epidemic. So, I'm here to fight that. We cannot, we cannot let animated movies be bad. Because what you show your children matters. Booyah. Amen. That's, that's, hell, that's second base. That's um, heckin' base, dude. That's heckin' base. I almost said a bad word. Uh, I'm really on. I'm getting fired up now. We're uh, getting, <laughs> I love this show. <laughs> I love. This is gonna be great. Uh, this is this is a, a festivus, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do I want to do next? Um, oh, that one's really hot. I'm gonna I'm gonna save that one. Um, keep it in the Disney vein. Mm -hmm. On the topic of Disney princesses, again. <laughs> Are they all about Disney princesses? No. <laughs> um, I think the live action Beauty and the Beast is better than the animated one. And I know there's a lot of nuance to that of like, oh, well, we have like modern technology, modern writing, blah, 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 like better music. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Right. The animated one mm -hmm. is still um, like still really good. And it's a classic. But I think in terms of conveying the story and telling the story and Enjoyment even the original watch. stuff they added that gave like more depth to Belle's mom and like her parents and how her mom died and like all of these little things and like showing the beast as this like even more sympathetic person in the sense of oh well yeah he's a like he's a douche but right at the same time like I don't know. She he was just like him. he was like twelve when he got right. cursed. So <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. He like, was kind of a brat. <laughs> maybe he just was a bratty kid. 
So, I don't know. I think there's a lot that it does better. I, I think some of the music is better. The music is where it gets really fuzzy. Dude, Cause Evermore, the, though. That's what I'm saying, though. Like they, add, they really made a really good live-action movie, and then they stopped there. Yeah. I will never... I will never stop mentioning the fact that live action remakes are a graph of they're a statistical graph of how much effort we need to put in to maximize profit. Mhm. And they went really high on the effort with like Cinderella and then they kept going down. Which is why, like, the early right. ones are good. Because you get, like, Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and they keep going down. And then where the graph perfects itself is amount of work is all the way at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Near zero. Right. But profit is all the way up here, and that's the the Lion King. Yeah. And then that's the attitude they've kept for all of them moving forward. So, yep. Beauty and the Beast was like one of the last good ones. Aladdin was pretty good. Say what you will. That's right. another high. Right. Free freebie for you. I freebie think the live take. action Aladdin was good. <laughs> Do I think it's better than the original? No. no. I just thought it was because, good. Because the original has Robin Williams. Right. That's so fair. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, live action Beauty and the Beast is better than the original. Mm-hmm. I okay. would watch okay. both. But I think that's based. I know a lot of people will disagree, but I think a lot of people of our generation will agree that that's based. My mom... My mom agrees with me, which is so funny because she's like a diehard Beauty and the Beast fan. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the first animated movie to win an Oscar. I know, right? That's crazy. So, you know, happy for them. Anyway, this is my last level one take. Ooh. Ready? This is a Marvel take. Oh. Let me... oh, I didn't even think about Marvel takes. Right, right. Hold on. Ready? I'm, I'm going to swap out one of mine for a Marvel take. Ready? Avengers Infinity War is a thousand times better than Endgame. Oh my gosh, that's so true. Because here's the thing. Infinity War had such... I think it had a bigger cultural impact than Endgame did. I really do. Because Endgame is only good in the last like 45 minutes. The lead up to Endgame is like snooze level storytelling. Like it's so hard to get there like endgame is hard for me to watch infinity war though is like the most movie movie of movies like it is like the quintessential like how many ips can we throw into this bombastic explosion movie and like nine times out of ten that's an awful idea it's like this is so cheesy and corny it is like the only good example of throwing a hundred IPs at the wall and letting them work together. It is like infinity war, like changed the movie industry because everyone at this point is just trying to replicate what infinity war did. No, you're right. And infinity war made me feel things that a movie had never made me feel. I like leaving the theater after infinity war was like leaving a funeral. Like, I was there the pre-release night, like, Thursday night, there for Infinity War. And everyone was there in their Marvel t-shirts saying their popcorns and their Cokes, and they were ready to go. And then, spoilers for Infinity War, by the by, but, you know, at this point, you should know. It's been a long time. Everyone freaking dies. Everyone dies. And you get to watch it. And then it ends. And then it ends. And then it, like picks up in Endgame, but not really. And it, it kind of like, Endgame does a lot of work to like kind of retcon a lot of what Infinity War did and kind of like try to get back there. So I think the final fight of Endgame is a cinematic moment that in history that we should always remember. But in Infinity War, as a movie, makes so much more sense than Endgame and is so much easier to watch. You know? It's kind of based. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. We haven't had a we haven't had a once fake we, yet. It's going to be interesting. Once we once we get down, <laughs> I I don't think I'm going to fake you until I get to level 3. Uh I think you're going to fake me on one of my next ones. Okay. Uh All right, guys. 
Level two spicy. We're turning up the spice. Let's see. Oh, I, I have one on here that you're definitely going to fake. Um, <laughs> the takes are getting hotter. I, I'll go ahead and bring it out. The La La Land ending sucks. Oh, that's fake. That's No, <laughs> it's just fake. bad. Like, no. I know the whole like, oh, well, it's, they could see what... You... Yeah. La La Land sucks because they made it for the Hollywood film bros. And that's the mm -hmm. worst part of the movie. Because it got exactly all of the Oscars that they were hoping it got by pitching to the right audience. And I hate that. Because it just... Oh, Self-care is turning off La La Land halfway through. And not finishing <laughs> the movie. Because it's so dumb. Because it is realistic. But I don't go to movies for realism, bro. I go to <laughs> movies because I want to be whisked away to this fun little land. You know, this La La Land Here's where I don't got to worry about the real world. Here's what's brilliant about La La Land is for the first half. No, this is going to be good. I promise. Mm -hmm. For the first half, they make you think that you're being wished away. You're like, wow, this is so magical. And then they're like, huh, it's like reality. And I think that La La Land is good because not to say because it's realistic, but it's because it's very good character writing in the sense that they were so selfish that they could not set aside their own desires to sacrifice to sacrificially love each other and be happy with each other and now they have to wonder if they ruined their lives for themselves because it's kind of like i've won but at what cost and that's a very complex narrative that not a lot of movies do well i still don't like it okay well you can not like it but it's also i think I have always said this. La La Land is an adult movie. Like you I don't like adult you, movies. <laughs> <laughs> Call me five because I like watching kids' movies. <laughs> <laughs> there is a level of maturity that like like I didn't understand La La Land the first time I watched it because I was like fourteen. And now I'm like now that I'm twenty, I'm like two percent more mature. And I'm like I get it a little more, but I think I'm gonna understand it a little bit more later. I don't know. Sound off in the comments. I think that's a fake take. I hate that. No. It, whatever. Okay. Okay. Go. So, level two. This is... I think my level two takes is what I call um, piss off the film bros. Oh, let's edition. go. So, um... That's, in, that's some instant bass right there. <laughs> Everybody ready? All right. All right. American Psycho is one of the worst movies ever made. Now, let me explain. American Psycho, now, Patrick Bateman, right? Amazing Christian Bale performance. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, it's a, it's a crazy commentary on the way that businessmen were in the 80s and this and that, and it's a, it's a satire, and you just don't get it because there's so much deep intricacy to the storyline and to the, to the nuances of the performance. And I'm like, okay, Christian Bale did good in that movie. He played a very convincing serial killer, but the plot is he's a serial killer. There is yeah. no like subtext. It is. He kills people. He drinks, he has sex and he kills. Like that's, that's it. That's the entire movie. And you cannot, you cannot tell me that that makes a good story because there's no subtext. It is just him having sex and killing people. That is not, that's not a, that's not a satire. That's, that's porn. This is not like, this not, this is not how stories work. Okay. That's, you can't call it a satire. You're like, Oh, it's just, it's, it's a dark comedy where, where? I like dark comedies. Okay. I like dark comedies. Him just like, Killing a hundred people for no reason is not a dark comedy. And you're like, okay, but what about John Wick? John Wick has motive. Patrick Bateman is just insane. I'm like, okay, that's the point of the character. Okay, it's a dumb point. That doesn't make a good story. Anyway, American Psycho, thumbs down. Get him. Based. That's based. That's based. I'll give I it think to it's you. Pretty based. All right. All right. Let me hear it. In the same vein. Okay, let me hear it. I'm going to say, film bros are stupid and they ruin movies. <laughs> like, 
I get I it. I need to hear the explanation here's, here's of the this thing. one. I went to school with a bunch of film bros because I went to film right. school. Like, that makes sense. Right. What I've realized now is I'm not a film bro. I am the mm-hmm. general audience consumer who likes mm-hmm. movies a little bit more <clears throat> than the general consumer. Right. So I'm like the middle ground between Average movie film bro enjoyer. <laughs> and um, between film bro and like casual, which common folk, <laughs> casual movie goer implies the existence of competitive movie goer, <laughs> which would just be the film bro, we just which is what we did last year <laughs> um, when we raced to a hundred. <laughs> yes, that is that was competitive movie goer. Um, but here's the thing. I went to school with a bunch of film bros, and I think the thing that frustrates me most is not... I understand the whole, like, getting really into a movie. And like you said about American mm-hmm. Psycho, like, the whole, like, oh, well, it's like has all these deep complexities and blah, 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 blah. That's fine. I totally understand, like, nerding out, getting really into your thing. Mm-hmm. The problem is, with film bros, is that it becomes a way to look down on other people and see them as less than because... Mm-hmm. That you they don't agree with what you're saying, and a lot of like what I got in school was like, oh, you've never seen The Godfather? You can't go to film school. Have you? How are you in film school and you haven't seen The Godfather? Like, right. I'm here because I saw The Godfather and wanted to make movies, and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I watched Star Wars, and that's what made me want to make movies right. and get creative. <laughs> like, my want and desire to make movies because of Star Wars is not lesser than. Because I didn't watch this movie that you've put up on a pedestal. Does that mean mm-hmm. that movie is good? Not necessarily, but it also doesn't mean it's bad. And I right. think film bros do a lot of glazing of these same movies of like The Godfather, Jaws, mm-hmm. Pulp Fiction, like anything that Quentin right. Tarantino touches. They're like, this is gospel. And I'm like, no, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was bad. That's another freebie for you. Um, <laughs> I don't want to look at feet for two and a half hours. Okay, jeez. Cook them. Anyway. Cook them. Um, so, yeah, I just... Just the toes. Film bros make things so unfun. And maybe it's because I'm on Twitter a lot and I see people talking. And, like, one thing... Like, film bros ruined across the Spider-Verse. Because all they would do is talk oh. about how this is the second oh. coming of Christ in movie oh. form. And I'm like, it's not. It's a sequel to a really good movie that did everything that the first movie did but slightly worse so should i swipe should i swap out one of my takes for an across the spider verse take oh don't worry i got you covered <laughs> um, okay cool <laughs> so yeah it's just film bros like ruin movies because they make everything about the complexities and the depth in the characters and i'm like yeah maybe i just want to enjoy a movie though like i don't yeah. need you telling me on twitter why Puss in Boots is an amazing movie because it has the most realistic depiction of a panic attack. I don't care. It's just right. a movie. Like it it's ain't fun. It, I, message to every film bro out there. It ain't that deep. <laughs> just watch the movie. Okay? I also think there is a there is a level of like, oh, I have a love of analyzing film. That's awesome. But a love of analyzing film is not an excuse to be a jerk. And that's kind of where, that's kind of my issue is a lot of this conversation is, oh, I'm better than you because you like the Mario movie. And it's like, no, I, if you were truly an appreciator of film, you would appreciate all film. And, you know, but you you just want to sit there and be like, Oh, but but the prestige. And I'm like, okay, I've never seen that movie. I'm sure it's good. You know, I like Christopher Nolan movies, but I've never seen or you've never seen The Dark Knight? No. Okay, hold on, I, hold on. I don't hold love on. Batman. That's kind of fake. <laughs> I don't I don't prescribe to that one. I've never seen it. I know. Not be- that's a problem. But also not for any hate. Because I love you Christopher Nolan it. and I love I just legitimately have never made the time to see it. So, I don't know. I don't know. I I think that is based as heck. Shoot, I keep thinking of all these other ones. Just just swap one out. Oh, we're just add it to the list, and we'll cut off when we feel like we've gone for too long. Okay, okay. Can never have too many hot takes. Okay, you ready for? You ready for another? While we're talking about film bros, I'm ready to just like get them. 
cut any tie cut of em. any like anyone who just <sighs> Dune is one of the most overrated movies of this generation. <laughs> Amen. Listen, listen. If I wanted to watch Timothy Chalamet brood in the desert with Josh Brolin, I would just watch The Phantom Menace, okay? That is not that is not on my card. Listen. Dune is technically a wonderful movie shot very well locations are gorgeous vfx whatever my problem is star it just isn't what it wants to be star wars so bad it wants to be star wars so bad but you know the difference between star wars and dune one of them is good is star wars is literally all about hope the point of Star Wars is hope and this and that. He's our only hope and there's always hope for the galaxy and we're going to fight this and that. Dune is just straight nihilism. There is so much just doom and gloom that I cannot get behind. Now, if I said that to someone who liked Dune, they would try to start explaining to me the lore and how it's different in the book and how if you watch the second one, there's this and if this and that. Listen, it's doomy and gloomy, and I don't want to watch that. Doomy. It is gloomy. just as doomy and gloomy. I would rather watch Star Wars. Listen, I have not seen Dune 2. Oh, how have you not seen Dune 2? I don't care. And I know that that's a really hard thing for a lot of people to grasp, but I don't care. And I think that that is a, kind of what you're hitting on on the Film Bro conversation is... Not all film bros are bad, but there's a, this whole like subculture that's like, I am so important that you have to care what I care about, and I don't. I'm so sorry. My favorite movie is Ratatouille. You don't have to care about Ratatouille. You don't. No, dude, my favorite movie is Weathering With You. A lot of people don't right, care about that right. movie. You don't have to care about my favorite movie, and, and I don't have to care about Dune. It's not, an, it's not how I want to spend my life. It's not how I want to spend my life. I don't want to watch three hours of Timothy Chalamet doing political dialogue about Spice and then watching him have flash flashes of Zendaya, which looks like a freaking perfume commercial. Okay, I don't need that. I don't need that. Here's Thank my, you for coming to my TED Talk. That is so based. Here's my thing about <laughs> Dune. As a massive Star Wars fan, right? To your point, Star Wars is all about hope. Now, Mm -hmm. All the Dune fans will be like, um, actually, Dune came first because it was a book, and then George Lucas read the book, and then he made Star Wars. Right. And I'm like, yes, that's cool. One of these is a multi-billion dollar franchise, though. Mm -hmm. One of them has nine movies, two spinoffs, and a handful of shows. I'm not here to tell you that Disney Star Wars is good. I'm just sheer numbers. Right, mm -hmm. and I know they say quality over quantity. It was, it was quality over quantity until Disney took over. Uh, right, but I'm just saying, Star Wars takes everything that Dune is and does it in a more entertaining way. George Lucas that probably is... read Dune and said, "Hmm, that's I interesting. This. <laughs> Let's add laser swords and magic, magic force, mm. and everything mm. else is pretty much the same." And he just took it and ran with it. And now it's one of the biggest franchises in the world. And Dune never really took off the same way. And you right. have to think about why that is. Because maybe people don't want a nihilistic story that is just, the world is going to end and it's so bad. Maybe people mm -hmm. want a hopeful story that is like, hey, there is always a light of hope out there even when it looks really bad. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I have my you know. own thoughts about... I could do a whole episode about why Dune is right. dumb, but I will right. contain myself. I will contain myself. Yeah. It's, I'm okay. I really am okay. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can get two fakes in a Hit row. Me. Uh, <sighs> okay. You ready for this one? <laughs> I'm so scared. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. is a top three Indiana Jones movie. 
because one, it's not that hard to be better than Dial of Destiny. So that already puts you back Amen. in the top four. Amen. Next. Freebie hot take. I don't think The Last Crusade's that good. Wow. I don't. You get a lot of freebies today. Right. <laughs> I think Kingdom of the Crystal Skull does a better job at wrapping up Indy's character. Uh -huh. Because, yes, uh -huh. there's like, oh, they're that ride in the sunset with his dad. And it was like open ended of like, what's he going to do? Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Right. Sure. Or you could have the full narrative cycle of coming back to Marion, bringing a, his son into it. I don't know why they fought the Russians and aliens. I'm not here to. I'm not here to make decisions for. I'm Steven not here to Spielberg. defend the alien decision. He wanted to do decision. something new. Let him do something new. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not here to defend the aliens. I think the aliens but let were him cook. cool because it was like all the Aztec stuff, dude. Everyone thought right. the Aztecs were aliens. Like, I don't know. Let it be. Maybe they were. Oh. Maybe they were. Who's to say? But I don't know. I just think it solidify especially that ending scene where like they get mm -hmm. remarried and like he's gonna go off and be happy with her and then maybe his son is gonna be the next one but he's like right. oh not yet i'm gonna take the hat back because you're not ready for it and like right. there was really good potential for them to like have shia labeouf be the next indiana jones and then mm -hmm. they he went a little crazy for a little bit and that's what transformers will do to you but <laughs> so i don't know i think it's a top three because Temple of Doom and Last Crusade are pretty interchangeable. But Raiders I of the Lost Ark is the best one. Right. By far. That's based. And then Temple of Doom or Last Crusade. I don't really care. Can I just uh, say... And then I think, Crystal Skull. I think... Well, Dial of Destiny is the worst Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, Let's get that clear. That's not even up for debate. That's not Let's, even a hot take. Let's that is not awful. pretend Terrible. like it's better than Crystal Skull. Right, You're right, lying right. to yourself. Listen. I think... I think you're based because I think that Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is better than Temple of Doom because Temple of Doom is so disturbing that it's not even like an enjoyable story. Yeah, it's like lame. it is so weird. They like everyone talks about like how could there why were there aliens in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull that were so weird as if they didn't just fight this temple of child sacrificers in Temple of Doom. <laughs> yeah, child and, like, slavery, that was totally sacrifice, normal. cult, blood drinking. Right. Like that wasn't like that was normal. And I'm like, okay, I think the aliens are a little more justified than <laughs> this choice. So TBH I think that's based. I'm I'm going to say based. All right. Let's go. Okay. Ready for ready for one more ready for more one, one for more six right now. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> ready for one more film bro L take. All right, hit me with it. Zack Snyder's Justice League is not that much better than Josh Sweden's Justice League. They're both no. pretty terrible. Both of them are bad. They're both terrible. Listen, listen. I had to sit I was forced to sit down and watch the entire the four hours oh, of I'm Zach so Snyder's sorry Justice League. All that in its five four aspect ratio glory. Like it here's my problem. Josh Whedon's Justice League was bad. It was very bad. It was very like half done, not you know, not thought out at all bad vfx terrible writing whatever and then they said hey give Zack snyder his movie back which was so fair because he had to leave production because he had a family tragedy so he left and trusted joss wheaton with it who ruined the movie right so they were like hey give Zack snyder his movie back cool let's do that unless someone can tell me that Zack snyder sat down in the editing chair and edited this movie himself this there is no such thing as a director's cut that is not how movie production works so Zack Snyder said hey this is the only chance I'm gonna get to make this movie I'm going to do everything that I want to do which was a bad creative decision because the best editors and directors are the ones that know when to cut. 
And if you don't know when to cut, you have a four hour movie because you cannot look me in the eye and tell me that the Justice League justified a four hour movie. There is not near enough story there to justify four hours. And it was boring. The action was lackluster. The VFX were better than Joss Whedon, but still not good. The soundtrack was not great. The acting, like, listen, listen. Ben Affleck is not a good Batman. He's a bad Batman. And that bothers me. He's a bad man. That bothers me. All this stuff. But we treated it like it was the greatest movie ever because we were mad that Zack Snyder didn't get to finish the movie. And I'm like, okay, here's the thing. That was a sucky situation that shouldn't have happened the way it did. But this is not a good movie. If you need like four hours to tell that story, maybe you should pull a Kill Bill and cut it into two or have the self-control to cut out the stuff that doesn't need to be there. I don't know if that's like a hot take or what, but I don't think it's that good. I think that's, uh, that's really, I've never seen either of them. Actually, it's a lot. I saw justice league. (sighs) Not great. Not great. Um, I saw, I actually went and saw justice league over Thor Ragnarok. When it was in theaters. That was such a bad decision. Which is so sad because my <laughs> uncle took me after work at Publix one day and he was like, what do you want to go see? I'll drive, I'll pay. And I'm like, oh, cool. Let's go see Justice League. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was an L. Your take, so though, that's, based. That's the last of my level two takes. So we are we are in, in the weeds. We are in the weeds now. This is the spiciest of spicy, the last dab level. All right. Hot, I hot have, take. I have five left, but I'm gonna cut two of them. Okay. So I have okay. three. I get a cut down. I think I'm gonna cut out that one. I can go down to three. And that one. I can okay, go down. To I three. have three left. Yeah, same. And I'm gonna do them in upwards order because I think my last one is my hottest take that I will defend okay. to my dying breath. Okay. Um. Next up. I'm ready. I'm so An ready. oldie but a goodie. <laughs> no Way Home is a bad movie. Like, yeah, sure. It's got all your favorite Spider-Man in it, but so does Into the Spider-Verse. So, like, Into the Spider-Verse is No Way Home but good. And No Way Home is bad because they, instead of doing this original thing, right? Like, Homecoming had original villains for Tom Holland, like his own variation on the classic Spider-Man villains. Far From Home had a really interesting, like, take on Mysterio, which was another, like, Spider-Man original villain. And then No Way Home just turned into this, like, you're gonna fight and rehabilitate the other Spider-Man villains while not having your own. Mm -hmm. And I think it would have been infinitely more interesting to give Tom Holland his own original villains during this movie, especially because people knew who he was. So now these villains know exactly who to target. Right. For him, like, I don't know. Like, it just could have been so good. It could have been so good. Because, like, we know because of Morbius that Mm -hmm. the vulture is still out there and like i don't know and also the nostalgia (laughs) didn't really do anything for me because i'd never seen those movies i grew up air quote with tom holland so bringing in those other ones had no nostalgia play for me at all including the villains like it wasn't like it would have been different if they just brought in toby and andrew right and had the original villains but they brought in the right. but they brought in the old villains because right. they brought in the old Spider-Man and I'm like it's just too much. It was way too much. <gasps> it was so bloated. And here's the thing. Give give Tom Holland his own green goblin to kill Aunt May, bro. Right. Like <laughs> don't make it willing to. It's the kind of thing where it's it's like it's like <sighs> 
listen, Homecoming, phenomenal. So maybe, maybe the best Spider-Man movie. You can fight me on that if you want, but I think Homecoming is maybe the best Spider-Man movie we've ever made. Now, No Way Home, great, wonderful movie with a very interesting villain that like exposed Spider-Man's identity. That's awesome. And then we go to the third one where we're like, okay, we've been following Tom Holland this whole journey and, you know, Tony Stark is dead now. And it's like, you know, we have to process this and we're getting there, this and that. And then we're like, okay, so this journey we've been following, we're going to touch on that a little bit. But also, we feel like this is a good opportunity to bring back two other characters that you haven't seen in forever. And, uh, you know, they really needed a second chance. And it's kind of like, okay... If you wanted to give them a second chance, you could have done it in a much easier way that wasn't impeding on Tom Holland's screen time because we right. really wanted, we were very invested in Tom Holland. It's not, they they put the other Spider-Man in there as if we weren't invested in Tom Holland and they needed something to pad the movie so that the audience would care, but we were there for Tom. And then we just didn't get his conclusion in the way it should have been because we had to spend so much time on the other Spider-Man. So I agree. I will watch that movie. Like, I think it's kind of fun, but it's the kind of thing where it's like, it's fun in the way that a fan fiction is fun. Like it, it feels like a fan fiction. <laughs> I think that's based. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. <sighs> okay. Okay. <sighs> I have four and I'm trying to decide which one I want to cut or I could just, okay, I'm just going to give you a freebie because this one, I'm not going to go on super long about it and it's not super related. Harry Potter adults are way more annoying than Disney adults. Amen. Listen, <laughs> oh my gosh. everyone Thank clowns you. on Disney adults. You're like, oh, you go to Disney world, this and that, this and that. It's like, okay. But Harry Potter adults will like ask which house you're in and will like, like, decide which house their baby is in so this and i'm like okay that's all fun and game like it's all fun but like why is your son named draco like that is so weird like i don't know Dis i don't think disney ad i don't know disney adults that name their kids after characters like I that do. is a uh, really okay give me an example of this <laughs> I mean, I don't off the top of my head, but like, right? But I know real. there are Disney adults that do it, right? But I feel like most of the Disney fans I know will name like their dog off of like a a Toy Story oh, yeah. character or something like that. But like, Harry Potter adults are another freaking level, dude. They're like always getting tats and all. The anyway, that's a side tangent, but. It felt like it could go in there. This is my, this introduces my level three spice and they're all Disney related. So these are my Disney hot takes. If you're ready for it. <sighs> I'm curious to see what you think about this one. Pixar's up is very boring after the first 15 minutes. I need to hear you out before I give a verdict. So listen, everyone talks about up. Like, it is this freaking cinematic masterpiece. And let me tell you, the beginning of Up is very, very heartwarming. It, like, tugs at your heartstrings. Oh, it's Carl, and it's his wife, and, you know, she she had a miscarriage. Like, that's awful. But then, like, she dies, and this and that, and now he's all, you know, he's all sad, and this and that. And that is... That is really amazing storytelling and the music is incredible and the animation is great and it's very creative. It's wonderful. I I love like the first half of Up, you know? But if you watch it without the nostalgia goggles, I feel like the second half is kind of like Disney movie plot.mp3. It's like oh, we have to go on this grand journey now and we're meeting all these crazy creatures and, you know, we're, oh, this is my hero, but he's a villain. Oh my goodness. And it's just kind of like the first like 15, 30 minutes of like setting that up is super incredible. It is very good filmmaking. And I'm not saying that Up is a bad movie. I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it's a great movie. 
But I think that when people talk about Up in high regard, they're only thinking about that first like quarter of the movie. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm going to give you a fake. Wow. Okay. No. No. Okay. No. I I will agree that the second half, like the, okay, I'm not even going to say that. Okay. The first half is really strong. Yeah. It's such a good montage of their life and mm -hmm. like how they like grew as a couple and overcame like not being able to have kids and like all of these things that you kind of plan for and then they didn't get to do, but they were still able to have like this ultimately happy life at the end of the day, even though not everything went their way mm -hmm. and it is great. And then it's almost like reality. You get that reality check of like, well, she's gone. And this is Carl's day to day is being a grumpy old man because the only person who brought him joy in life is gone. And he's this grumpy old man who doesn't like change, who doesn't want to do anything, doesn't want to sell his house because the the, the the capitalization of his neighborhood, right? And then, like, he just snaps and he hits this guy on the head. And, like, that's a whole thing. And they're like, hey, maybe you're washed up. Maybe you need to go to this retirement home. And he's mm -hmm. like, no, which is still being this grumpy, stubborn old man. And that's when he meets Russell who's this young, like, go-getter, who's like, maybe life's not so bad. And the course of the movie is him not only fulfilling the goal of going to Paradise Falls, which is what he wanted to do with Ellie, and leaving their house there in, like, this ultimate triumphant thing, but he also mm -hmm. has this, like, fatherly relationship with Russell of giving Russell a father figure because he didn't have one. And dude, I'll never forget that scene at the end where like all the dads are putting on the thing mm -hmm. and putting on the badges and Russell doesn't have one. So Carl goes up and gives him the grape soda badge. Dude. And maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe it is the nostalgia goggles, but that scene hit different for me because I was in that situation. Right. As I joked about on our Pixar episode, like as someone who didn't have a dad, right? I right. didn't, but I had a granddad who stepped into that role mm -hmm. and still made sure that I got all of the things that a dad should have. And that relationship right. with them really resonated with me. But I also think it's this incredible story of like, never meet your heroes because maybe they're not all they're cracked up to be. So I don't know. I got to give you a fake on that one. I see. I I, I, think, I think you just don't get good. it. I I just think I, you're too uh, <laughs> simple-minded to understand the premise Listen, of Up. But you don't have a high enough IQ. It's kind of like the beginning is great and the end is great, but the middle loses me. No, I don't no, appreciate. I don't like no. the middle. <laughs> That's just wrong. Okay. 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 You're telling me like, this is you little don't three spice. Like. When his house starts burning and he's losing all the balloons and, like, he has to figure out how to, like, and he kicks Russell out and then he, like, almost talks to the ghost of his wife who's like, hey, you need to go take care of this kid. He's yeah. Like, all right. But, and he I finds someone to love again who makes, gives, like, joy and purpose in his life. Like... I don't know. Maybe I, I need to rewatch it you with need a to different lens. I... That's I'll rewatch it and report back. I'll rewatch it and report back. This is level three. I, I can't know, like hold but it's back. So fake. <laughs> All right, let me hear. I think I don't think you're gonna like any of the rest of my oh, takes. That's great. I'm glad they're Disney because this is like my one realm where I can really right swing the bat. <laughs> swing. All right. Let me hear it. Next one. It's getting hot. I think you're gonna. I think you're gonna base both of these. Ray. Okay is not a Skywalker, and I'm tired of pretending that she is. <laughs> I'm so that's sick so and tired. Every time I see a post on Twitter that's like, Ray is a Skywalker, like if you agree. I'm like, she's not, though. She's a skinwalker, dude. She's a faker <laughs> who stole the name. Skywalker more like groundwalker. Because here's the thing. Everyone's like, well, it's symbolic. Right, like Ray is not biologically it's a Skywalker. It's a found family. It's the found fam. She was adopted into that family. Yeah, go blow smoke up a tree. That is so <laughs> false. Like, 
No. She was not adopted into this family because she merely spent a little time with Han, Luke, and Leia. That's <laughs> not how this works. Like, you could say, oh, well, Leia saw her as, like, her own daughter. Yeah, okay, then show me that in the movie. Right. You could have full intention, and maybe that's in, like, the novelization of The Rise of Skywalker and The Last Jedi. Maybe that's in there. Put it in the movie if that's the direction you're going to mm-hmm. go. I don't want you to, like, tell me that she's a Skywalker. Show me. She doesn't mm-hmm. get brownie points for being the last person alive at the end of the sequel trilogy who happened to interact with the Skywalkers. And, and if you're going to make that case, then Poe is a Skywalker, too, because he spent a lot of time with Leia. Did he right. not? Mm-hmm. At that rate... No, I'm not going to say Chewbacca basically is... Well, Chewbacca is more of a solo than anything else. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. But, like, you get my point of, like, saying that X character spent time with this character don't mean Doesn't, squat, no. bro. No. It don't mean anything. So, I'm gonna, no. I'm going to put a certified a Skywalker. base stamp and on I, that one. <laughs> I'm also so sick of erasing her Palpatine heritage because there's such a good storyline to be had there there. of like (laughs) well now she needs like let's go beyond what family names are and she needs to make a name for being palpatine right right which is so counterintuitive because she's like oh family isn't family family isn't isn't your blood what but isn't your blood but also i'm I'm abandoning my blood because it's because i don't like that and it's kind of like oh, freak, dude. wait, what if family isn't blood, then embrace the Palpatine name and clear it. Like you don't Oh my right. gosh. Like I don't know. Yeah. No. Oof. Okay. That is a certified based stamp on that one. I can go one um, for nine. Good word. That'd be great. <clears throat> good for good word. <sighs> you you're gonna hate this <laughs> so much. We're about to fight. <laughs> We're about to fight so hard. Um, Frozen is a hundred times better than Tangled. No, that is so fake. That is so fake. He has to be capping. There is no way. There. There is no Frozen, shot. You Frozen genuinely believe that. Frozen has better characters. No. Frozen has better music. Frozen has better animation. Fro- Frozen has a better story. Frozen just Frozen no. is more iconic. Uh, no, 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 no. Frozen just you overall. don't get to just say those things. I need you to start yes, giving examples. Because you don't characters... get to just say, oh, the characters are bad. Give me an example. <laughs> Give me an okay. example. Anna and Elsa are an amazing dynamic of like family that like try to care about each other, but they have their issues. Okay. They have their issues. And then you look at freaking Kristoff and Anna, which is a much better couple than than freaking Rapunzel and Eugene Fitzherbert. I'll be respectful now, and let you finish, but I no. <laughs> said I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> but Beyonce, but no. <laughs> <laughs> see, they're a better couple. He cares for her so much more. He didn't need. Listen, Kristoff didn't need. <laughs> Listen, the freaking the freaking <laughs> <laughs> that face. So, so think to Frozen Two, right? When when Kristoff grabs Anna and they're like in battle, and she's like, "I'm so sorry, I haven't been there for you." And he says, "I'm here. What do you need?" That is a freaking good boyfriend right there. He's the best. And then they like freaking get married, and then they're amazing. Listen. Listen, amazing characters. The music is better. I'm sorry. The music is both in great in both, but the music in Frozen is better. Freaking love is an open door. Listen, into the unknown is better than let it go, but let it go is good. Listen, you have you have reindeer are better than people. That's iconic. That's iconic. Listen, Frozen. Frozen is great when you don't have someone in your ear saying that it's not. All right, listen. And then the greatest twist villain of our generation, when he's, oh, Anna, if only there was someone who loved you. Jaw on the floor. The first time we all saw that, we knew that this was peak. We knew that this was peak. All right. 
Olaf, iconic. Sven, iconic. So many characters. An amazing world with an amazing magic system that gets fleshed out so well in the second movie. Listen, amazing world. So, so good. Tangled would be better if they didn't have that opening scene that explains the entire story before you even see it. Okay, are you done? <laughs> I'm done for now. Okay, let's back up. Let's back up. I'm going to add a caveat here. I yield my time, Mr. President. I'm going to give a caveat here. Mm -hmm. I don't think what you're saying about Frozen is wrong. Right. I 100% agree. Frozen is an incredible movie when you don't mm -hmm. have someone in your ear telling you that it's bad. I completely agree with that. I was a Frozen hater until I rewatched it a couple years ago. I was like, okay, hold on. This is kind of gas. What the? Well, right. Same for Frozen 2. I think Frozen 2 is a great sequel. I think where you go wrong is saying that they're better than Tangled. That's the let fallacy also in say, your statement. Let me also give a caveat. I will also say Tangled is a great movie. Tangled is phenomenal. Tangled is like a masterpiece. But I still like Frozen better. You're just wrong. <laughs> you, okay. Let, okay. Let's go back. Let's break this let's down. Let's go back. Characters. First of all, Tangled has a smaller pool of characters. So I don't I don't know if that's really a fit. That's like saying I'm going to compare my 12 Lego sets to your two Lego set. I don't know. But also, quality over quantity, if you know what I mean. Next. Don't you dare sit here and Im insinuate that Eugene Fitzherbert did not care for Rapunzel. Don't, don't, no, no. This man broke out of jail and died for her so that she could be free from her emotionally manipulative, gaslighting, psychopathic, fake adopted mom. He died, bro. He knew he was either going to get killed by Mother Gothel or he was going to get caught again and be executed. Or he was going to be executed before he broke out. It was a lose-lose-lose situation for him, but he sacrificed himself to save her. And he cut her hair so that she could be free. He freed her by cutting her hair and then took her back home to her parents and was like, hey, I'm here. He also... I don't know, reformed his ways. He went from being like, I want to be the greatest criminal ever to, you know, I could be a good person. Like, that's what that's what having a good woman around you does. Like, it can revolutionize you as a man. I'm just saying. <laughs> what did Kristoff do? I don't know. He went from an ice guy to a slightly more powerful ice guy because he's dating the princess. Like... Kristoff was an underdog story. He was raised. So was, was Flynn Rider. By... What do you mean? Okay. Well, he was a better underdog no. story. Oh, my God. There's a whole, like, there's a redemptive aspect to it. Also, if you're going to bring in Frozen 2, I'm going to bring in Tangled the series because. Okay, go for it. One to one. Dude, that series is so good. Oh, my gosh. It deals <laughs> with so much of their relationship, and it expounds upon so much. And there's betrayal and heartbreak and twists. And at the end of the day, it's like them learning to communicate and work through their problems and get. Also, Tangled has a great magic system. That is fleshed out in the show because you find out there's a sun drop flower and there's a moon drop flower. <clears throat> Do I think the the ending villain is great? Not really, but that's but that's not what I'm talking about here. Also, music wise, I no 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 no. <laughs> Tangled clears in the music department. I don't know. Listen, what you're about. listen. I think your music just, is great. I see the light. Listen, I see the light is infinitely cooked. better than any of the romance songs in Frozen. What about Lost in the Woods? No. No. I see the light clears Lost in the Woods every day of the no. week. No. Every day of the week. I don't know about that. Every day of the week. I don't know Also, the, the, oh, I don't remember what the name of the song is, but it's the one where they're like dancing in the courtyard. Oh, Love is an Open Door. No, no, from Tangled. No. Oh, from Tangled? Yeah, the medieval one. 
Oh, where they're. Yeah, that, one. that, I have a dream. Dude, when will my life begin? The I'm Tangled soundtrack that, clears saying, the Frozen soundtrack that, every day of the week. I'm not saying that Mandy Moore didn't cook on this soundtrack. She, she did. Cooked I'm not hard. saying Adina Menzel didn't cook. I'm just saying right. the Tangled soundtrack clears the Frozen soundtrack every day of the week. Sounds like we're in an agree to disagree. Kind we're gonna of have thing. to, or we're gonna be here because all day. We... We're already at an hour and forty-five. <laughs> because we <coughs> both agree that these are amazing. Amazing pieces of art. We're just disagreeing that we one just is better have than the different other. preferences. We just have different preferences. You know what? Frick it. I'm gonna watch Tangled tonight. Nah, <laughs> uh, that depends on this how late even, my stream goes. My stream doesn't. This isn't start till even late. my hottest. This isn't even my hottest of hottest takes. So, do you think you I'm know. gonna hate the next one too? I don't know. I think you're gonna be kind of neutral. Okay. I guess we'll see. All right. Let me hear it. All right. My last one. Let me hear it. Uh, you're going to base this one because we've already had this okay. conversation. Okay. Cars 2 is the best movie in the franchise. Like, say what you will. I'm not... Okay, Cars 3 sucks. I'm sick of pretending that it's good. I don't think undoing your character's arc for the whole, like, well, he needs to learn to, like, accept that things are over and pass things... Like, yeah, okay, shut up. I don't care. That's <laughs> not a character. That's, like... You had to regress him back to being a competitive racer who only cares about racing to go on that journey. And he, like, stopped caring about his friends that he made along the way. Cars is an incredibly solid movie. I'm not going to tell you that it's bad. But as I talked about right. in our Top 10 Pixar episode, I have a little personal bias as to why I don't like Cars. Mm -hmm. Cars 2, on the other hand... Does a lot of bam, great, bam, interesting, bam, amazing bam, things. Bam. There's depth, bro. Like, okay, yeah, sure. Cars 1 and 3 are just about racing. Cars 2 is about racing and also... Spies. <laughs> spies and the deep evil and collusion and conspiracy of big oil. You know all those conspiracy theories about people who made engines that can run off of water? Dead. People who can uh, mm -hmm. run en engines off of not oil? Dead. Yeah, those conspiracies brought up in Cars. Also, mm -hmm. Cars 2 does a lot to expand the world because we get to see the car Pope, the car Queen of England, uh, the car military, which would imply that there was a Cars crucifixion, a Cars British Revolution, and a Cars American Revolution, respectively. There's also spies okay. that are really cool, and the cars have guns on the side that go blah, 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 blah. And I think it was great to flesh out Mater and make him a main character. Right. Now, I think they kind of fumbled the writing with Lightning McQueen to yeah. compensate. Because they got to make somebody the bumbling idiot for the movie. So, yeah. I'm going to put half-based on that one. Because I will always defend Cars 2. I think Cars 2 is amazing. But I still think Cars, the original, is the best in the series. So I think you're half right that Cars 2 is amazing. But Cars will always be the best. But I understand your personal affliction with the film. So I want you to know, before you give your last one, the only reason mm -hmm. I have not thrown off my headphones in frustration is because these headphones are so hard to get out and in. Because <laughs> they're like the IEMs that are like in your right. ear and I have to like unwrap it and unplug it. You have it. to like unwrap it. So I just want that to be clear. I wanted to be clear that I would be Bef throwing a lot more I things. Would be th <laughs> I would have thrown it on the frozen one, dude. If I could have just like... Uh, just been like, nope. <laughs> All right. I don't think you're going to super care about this one. This is maybe my hottest take since not liking ketchup. But Wait, you don't listen. like ketchup? No, I don't. I really think ketchup is gross. What? Hold on. Do you not know? Hold on. Hold on. Freebie, <laughs> let's unpack this for a second. <laughs> what? I don't like the taste. I don't like the texture. It makes me like... The smell of ketchup makes me gag. Like, I don't like ketchup at all. So you don't eat, like, ketchup on burgers or, nope. like, fries? Nope. nope. What do you put on your fries? Um, I will either go, here's the thing. 
I can go plain fries. I can go plain fries if I need to. No. The best thing to dip fries in, though, is Chipotle ranch. That is the best no. fry dipping. No. Or ranch. Ketchup was created for fries. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> is this another headphone throw moment? Or... <laughs> No, See, I'm just mad. <laughs> what do you mean? I've never. It, it makes like, sense. I've never seen you eat ketchup. See, I, see. I thought that's just because we, we didn't were, have ketchup. Oh my! Remember God. when we were at that overpriced restaurant last week, and you said you can eat your ketchup, and I said no, and I gave it to you. Remember that? Hmm? I just thought you didn't. I, I don't know. I didn't think yeah. it was because you didn't like ketchup. I thought it's because you were like, oh, well, I see you need it more than me, and right. I'm like, I'm not gonna <laughs> eat a lot of it. So go ahead. Yeah, that is that's another freebie. Another freebie. I think it's not even movie related, right? <laughs> we need to do another episode that's just general life like hot takes. Oh, I got plenty of those. Okay, I got plenty that revolve around driving too. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's so dude! True. Here's my driving hot take. Here's driving another hot take, freebie. If you're over the age of fifty, you should have to retake your driver's test every five years. <laughs> That's so vague. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my driving hot take. If 10 over the speed limit is too slow for the left lane, how fast is too fast? W- what has this country over. come to? What that's has this country the, come that's to? It, that's it. If the speed limit is 70 and I'm going 80, you cannot get mad at me. The speed limit. The word limit. Is how this fast is spe- you should be going. The speed limit is the only <laughs> limit that we surpass. If you're like at the limit of like crack that a human can add, you're not adding 10. <laughs> you know, you're going to die. <laughs> it's called the limit for a reason, bro. <laughs> this man did not just <laughs> the limit of crack. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> the no. limit of crack, dude. <laughs> no, but think about it. Think about it. speed limit is the only <laughs> limit that you want to exceed. Like, if you're at like the limit of something, you want to be like well below the limit. Like. <laughs> 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 my anyway. god i'm crying dude that was so funny <laughs> oh, that's your cold open uh, okay. <laughs> all right what's your right. last hot take i don't know if you can top here's that. uh here's the hottest of hots right this is the one that gets me the most grief like if I'm in a film conversation and i drop this one it's over like there's no more respect for me <sighs> I think The Lion King is a very boring oh. movie. And I don't like The Lion King. Now, I'm talking about the animated one, the original one. Live action one is worse, but the animated one, the music is phenomenal. Sir Elton John cooked on that one. The story is very slow. Now, they're being like, but he gets trampled, this and that. Okay, that's like the fastest part of the film okay the rest of it is just them kind of hanging out and talking about him getting trampled now granted the main the main argument i've heard from this is they're like okay well it was based on a shakespeare play do you not like shakespeare no i don't like shakespeare maybe i just don't like shakespeare okay i've been to multiple shakespeare plays don't think that i'm uneducated okay i went to college and i had to read shakespeare and it was boring Shakespeare is boring now granted I've had some interesting takes on Shakespeare that are good this is not one of them wow animation great love the concept love the music voice cast was very good I just it's not one that I'm ever going to intentionally turn on I don't think that it is Disney's best work I don't think it's bad by any means I think the best word I can use for how I feel, I think The Lion King is overrated. It is not what people have built it up to be over the years. That's where I land. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's terrible. There's stuff I like about it, but I think it's overrated as heck. I think you're just... There you go. 
I mean, it's not my favorite either. I don't think it's right. overrated though. I'm just tired of people gassing it up. on that one. I'm tired of it hearing the Lion King gassed up like it's the best thing since sliced bread when I mean, it's it just is. pretty good, you know? It kind of is. I'll stop. All right, guys. All right, guys. We got to wrap this up. Dude, you're not going to top the thing about crack. That was <laughs> so funny. We're getting delusional. <laughs> like, this is. I'm in my Delulu era at the moment. We're, this is too. This is too bad. Okay. The takes wow. got so hot. The takes got, got like, so hot. We got a really bad got, fever and we got brain you damage. Know. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Nerdiest Podcast. It got a little hot in here. It was a little a little heated near the end there. Man, good stuff. This is what the show is all about. This is this is what the show is built on. Was just hot takes. Hot, hot takes. Unless you have anything else to add, I think we're ready to wrap up. The only thing I'm going to say is if you guys like this episode, we'll do more. We will do more. We have an abundance of hot takes to spare. Right. We could do shows. We could do games. We could do just life, general life, if you want us to go off topic for the after show I got plenty more about driving. Whatever you need. Same. Me too. So, you know. Could do a whole one on driving. (laughs) (laughs) Driving edition. We recorded in a car. So, if you're made it this far thank you so much for listening and you know what new merch in the store right now the nerdiest go look at our new designs and follow us on instagram at the nerdiest podcast and on twitter at nerdiest pod and youtube at the nerdiest podcast where you can watch video versions of episodes or if that's not even if that's just still not enough for you for a mere 2.99 a month you could get our bonus after show only on spotify Spotify subscriptions, I will say. Only on Spotify subscriptions. It's a really great way to support the show. It's fully independently produced. Merch in the description. Subscribe on all the YouTube channels. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. This was so much fun. And we will see you in the next one. Until then, bye.